Radio. All right, welcome to this uh, week's edition of Working the Web to Win. I'm your host, Carl Weiss. With me in the studio is co-host Hector of the Connector Cisneros and special guest from Aura Brush, Austin Craig. How you doing, Austin? Hi, Austin. Doing great. How are you guys doing? All good. Uh, before we get deep into the show, let me give the call in numbers for the folks out there. It's 213-943-3808. That's 213-943-3808. If you want to call in and get on the show and uh, join the conversation. Yeah, that's right. The more the merrier, right? And if you'll notice, too, we have our, our new studio uh -huh. this week. So we have uh, lavished uh, every expense to uh, bring you uh, an even more exciting uh, visual presentation. Of course, Austin, you get to see the, the real cool studio in the background there. <laughs> he has no idea. <laughs> Today's uh, topic is called Humor as a Weapon of Mass Distraction. Yeah. And uh, the reason we call it that is because, believe it or not, there are a lot of companies out there that are finally figuring out that funny videos sell. Actually, humor is in vogue right now. I mean, you see a lot of really, really big companies jumping all over this bandwagon. Um, and it's because it's not really, like, what you, the title of your side of the blog was mass distraction. I said it was a mass attraction. And it could be literally both. I mean, right. because you distract them that you're selling to them, but you're also attracting more people. So that's the cool part of it. Yeah, you know, and, and everybody is familiar with, you know, like the Aflac duck and the, the Geico gecko, but what, what a lot of people are not aware of is the fact that even smaller companies, in fact, a lot of startups right. have really made their marks by using humor. Well, we work with a lot of startups and that's one of the things that we tell them to do. We want them to be actually, to be different. And one of the best ways to be different is the singular, you know, make yourself different by being funny about your product, but in a way that's still informative. That's right. And that's one of the reasons why we invited Austin onto the show today, because he is the spokesperson for Aura Brush. And, and for people that are not used to Aura Brush, of course, you can see it on the screen here. It looks kind of like a toothbrush, doesn't I, it? But it's not. It's a tongue brush. That's right. It's the world's first tongue brush. So tell me a little about your story. I mean, how did uh, the Aura Brush come to be? The, the product itself was invented here in Utah by a local inventor, uh, a PhD, Dr. Bob. People think he's a dentist or an orthodontist or something. He's a PhD. He's got a background in developing products. Uh, and he's 78, 79 years old now. When he started this, he was probably in his late 60s and started developing this tongue cleaner. Um, the idea got it manufactured, really had something that worked well, and he got intellectual property on it. So there. There's no other like scraper and brush combination out there. Yeah, he kind of like cornered the market on it, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he'd been, through, through his whole career, he'd been developing products for larger companies, and here was a product he developed himself for himself and for, you know, for him to sell rather than for a large corporation to sell. Right, but, but it didn't exactly go smooth from the get-go, did he? I mean, he spent a lot of time, he spent a lot of money, I think he even commissioned a, uh, an infomercial, and as, as a net result, it ended up falling flat on his face, didn't he? First, for yeah. a time. Yeah, he he tried everything. Uh, he tried it, just getting it in stores and on uh, on like you know they would take a cut of the sales. They would just put it on the shelf, uh, at, but nobody noticed it. He taking it to an infomercial and have a, a very fancy flowery infomercial produced, but it's kind of dry and uh, cost him forty thousand dollars. He sold less than a hundred units, and these brushes, I think, at the time they were selling for like three dollars a piece. So. He was running a huge loss on that and was trying to figure out what to do and took it to a local university here in Provo, Utah. He took it to Brigham Young University, took it to a marketing class, had them analyze it. And the students who analyzed it didn't think there was much potential with it, but there was one student in the class who was like, now hold on, come on. It's a widely applicable product. You could sell this online. I'm sure there's a way to do that. And together and started working kind of nights on weekends to try to market this online. He had a number of different things. One of the things that he wanted to try was making a web video. This is a friend, Jeff Harmon, about four years right, ago. Right. Yeah, and, and that's where you came out with your the first horror brush video, uh, which I understand was shot in a pool hall, wasn't it? Yeah, we didn't know where any local studios were. Neither Jeff nor I had worked in, like, independent video production at the time. Okay. I was studying broadcast journalism at the local university. So, like, it's not in the evening news, you know, an accident on whatever. I'd been in front of a camera a lot, but never had done anything like this before. Uh, but Jeff knew that I was comfortable in front of a camera. We worked together at our day job, and 
he knew that I had a propensity for like fast talking rants. So like if something was going on in technology or company policy or politics that I didn't agree with, like, you really thought about the implications of that? That's absolutely insane. Just think about what and he thought this was really funny. I decided, let's get this guy on camera talking about bad breath. See if we can make a funny video to sell this to. Okay. Awesome. Stand by for one second. Stand by for one second, please. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to play the little video that you've got on your homepage because I want the uh, viewers to see it. I want the people at home to, that are listening in also to hear it. Halitophobia, the irrational fear of bad breath. I'm a halitophobic. I'm not so much afraid of me having bad breath, I'm afraid of other people having bad breath. As in, hey buddy, your breath smells like crap. Maybe you should develop a case of halitophobia. Now I know what you're asking, how do we know if we have bad breath? You use this, you use a spoon. Now I know what you're thinking, a spoon, you eat with a spoon, you play spoons, you spoon your girlfriend. You take the spoon, you take the spoon and you stick it at the back of your tongue and gently scrape. Let it dry and take a whiff. If it stinks, your breath stinks. And if your breath stinks, this is the only kind of spooning you're gonna be getting. The smart viewer out there will know, to check your bad breath, you notice that we checked our tongue. 90% of bad So anyway, it's on for a little bit, but I mean, the, the whole point is, is that you're basically poking fun at people's breath. <laughs> yeah, and the first videos you had, you didn't have the tongue yet. The tongue came later. Yeah, that was about a year later that we decided to do that. I mean, we had this video, it did really well, we started promoting it, and it kind of snowballed. Here was a project, we produced that video for 500 bucks, we were doing it on our nights and weekends, and then it took off in a way where we were like, this could be more than one video, this could be more than several videos, this is a company. Um, and Orbrush just kind of snowballed and grew from there. About a year later is when we introduced the tongue character who became the second Orbrush spokesperson. And uh, we knew that we needed to produce regular content rather than just one viral video, so we started doing a video every week with this. Yeah. And, and you know the thing is, is that over the over the amount of time that you guys have done this, I mean, you you have accumulated like what forty million video views. I mean, you're, you're like one of the most watched yeah. channels on YouTube. Right. So again, it just shows that you can take a company pretty much from zero and start up using uh, viral videos, and all of a sudden you're in the game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I wanted to just bring up, for example, this company's been so successful, they've actually now spawned new products. So the latest one I've seen is called Aura Pup which is actually a tongue brush for dogs. And what's really cool about it is, you know, when I first saw the, the idea, tongue brush for dogs, my dog is not going to let me brush his tongue, <laughs> but they came up with a way to get the dogs to brush their own tongue, which is pretty amazing. You know, so uh, tell, us like a little, tell us a little bit about that item. The idea for that actually came from our fans on the Aura Brush videos. People would write in the comments or write on our Facebook page, hey, can I use this on my dog? Do you have one for dogs? Will you make one for dogs? And at first it just seemed crazy. But we got that request so often that Dr. Bob, the inventor who came up with the Orbrush, started working on it. And he came up with a solution that was kind of a large pad of an Orbrush for dogs, and then an enzyme-based solution that you put on there that tastes like, eh, it's great, the dogs love it. I'm not sure I would love, want it on my uh, pancakes or waffles or anything like that, but it's kind of this sauce that you put on there. Dogs lick it up, and the enzymes help keep their, their mouth clean, keep their breath fresh, and cleans off their tongue as they're licking the brush. It's really cool. They got, uh, if you go to the, the, to the YouTube channel, you can see it. I'm sure they probably have it on the website also. But that, again, it shows you that with success, you breed more success. And, again, you launched it on YouTube. So. Yeah. yeah, we used YouTube video to promote that one. We used YouTube to kind of refine what message was going to be for this product. Like, here's a dog tongue cleaner, but how do we, how do we educate people about this? Because it's a whole new product category. How do we tell them what it is, how it works, uh, what the deal is that they would be getting if they ordered now? And we tried out a whole bunch of different variations on that. And we also launched it on Indiegogo, the crowdfunding platform. Wow. So we put it on there and kind of refined how we were going to sell this thing. And by the time we got funded on Indiegogo, we knew okay, here's a product that we'll sell, and here's how we'll sell. Here's the messaging you will use. Here are the, here are the visual assets, you know, the pictures that work. Here's the copy that works. Uh, it was how, much, how much money did you actually raise on Indiegogo? On Indiegogo, we raised about 16000 but mm -hmm. that was, that was pre-orders on the product. But then we started shipping. We had pre-sold, I think, about three-quarters of a million dollars worth of dog tongue cleaners. Wow. So let me ask you, Austin. I mean, you have the product. You have the video. How do you push it? How do you get a video like yours to go viral? What were some of the techniques that you guys used to push it out to the masses? 
thing that we rely heavily on is, uh, is testing. Mm -hmm. so our videos, we'll test everything. We test all the tags, the description, the thumbnail. We try out a whole bunch of different ways and see which one has, you know, incremental better performance. The thumbnail performs 2% better than all the rest. This title performs a percent and a half better than all these other ones. And adding those all together, you have a video that in aggregate, with all those different strengths from all your different tests, works way better than any of the other ones uh, alone would. And we do that on our website as well. Heavy testing on the website, and that's just ongoing. We're really done testing our website. We're always coming up with variations to see what's going to work best. I would, I would say that, you know, that's awesome because most clients don't like to do the testing because, again, they got to pay for that kind of stuff. So yeah. I've told them in the past, I mean, you really want to get the best bang for your buck. You really sort of have to at least do some kind of A-B testing to see what's going on. And if you leave that out, then you're really sort of flying by the seat of your pants and you don't really know how well anything will happen. Or how well, yeah, how well if, you, if, you're, if you're not A-B testing, you're kind of flying blind. You're going by your own assumptions, which are frequently wrong. And we like to think over at Orbrush, we're like, oh, yeah, we've been doing this for a few years, really good at this. We know it's going to work. We have proven wrong so many times. The variation, the test, nobody thought was going to perform outdoes all the rest. It happens all the time to the point where, like, I kind of don't try to guess which one's going to work the best anymore because I'm so frequently incorrect. The tests will show what works, my guess. Hey, and, you know, another thing, too, that I like to point out to people because, again, you're, you're a, you know, a shining example of, of how to do, right. how to succeed online using funny videos, but a lot of people are saying, okay, you know, every now and then you get a Cinderella story, you know, it can't possibly happen right. again. No, there's lots of really good ones yeah, out in here. In fact, we've actually collected a few of them, and I'm going to share one with everybody right now. There's another one that we have kind of taken a fancy to. It's called Dollar Shave Club. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Dollar Shave Club, yeah. but uh, they basically based their product, they wanted to come up uh, and sell razors. I mean, this is right. not something, with, unlike Aura Brush, they didn't invent any super right. razor that has right. all kinds of fun, fancy bells and whistles. Razors. I mean, basically what they're doing is they're just selling, you get, you get two-bladed razors, four-bladed razors, or six-bladed razors right. every month. Come and get yeah. it. Sounds yeah. really exciting, right? And, you know, plus they're also fighting up an uphill battle because you've got companies like Procter & Gamble. Right. You've got Schick. You've got Bic. You've got all these major players in the industry. So how's a little guy going to get into the game? So what they did was, kind of like Aura Brush, they yeah. said, let's commission a funny video. And I'm just going to play, a, again, a few seconds of Hi, their video. I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah. A dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. <laughs> Each razor has a stainless steel blade and You know, that same line. I've seen four or five other companies now copy that. And also, they're either, either modeling your, your pieces or, or his pieces. Um, as a matter of fact, there's a big IT company that almost models his exactly. And they didn't get several million views like he did, but they got... 286,000 views in about a month and a half, which is, I don't care where you, how you well, measure it, it's, it's still start. pretty good. Well, and then you're in the game, you right. know. So then what you want to do is kind of along the lines of what Orbrush did, you commission more videos, and they have too. Right. Dollar Shave Club now has more than the one video. But again, this was a, a company that started off with five people and turned it into a success because I think within the first month they had uh, gotten over 2 million views and yeah. sold at least 12,000 units. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, before we go real deep into it, you know, there's lots of different elements that make all these things work. I mean, we're trying to give our listeners here how they can do this, how they can replicate this thing. And again, some of it is a little bit of luck. Some of it is timing. But there are elements in there that all the best ones have. And if they stick those in there, it'll be really good. Because there's, there's, you got the chance of really getting a home run, but it, you can also shoot yourself in the foot if you do this wrong. And there are a lot of people who just think, oh, we can make a funny video, and then they go shoot themselves or, in the foot. Or the <laughs> other way around, you get a lot of companies that are afraid of poking fun at their own product. Right. Okay, and one of the ones that I, I kind of wanted to talk about was spam. Right. Okay, you know, people people make fun of spam. As a matter of fact, if you remember, Monty Python did a skit. What you got then? Well, there's egg and bacon, uh, egg, sausage and bacon, <laughs> egg and spam, egg, bacon and spam. So... <laughs> There is, again, <laughs> something that's poking fun right. at a product, but yet it's a product that they just sell, you know, right, crap like out of. I mean, they, yeah, it, really. I mean, I think, what was it? They had the actual number in here. I think last year, they I forget how many millions of units, hundreds of millions of units they sold in here, but it was just an incredible number for something that people make fun of. Right. 
So again, right. if you take yourself too seriously, sometimes you're going to find yourself in a position where you're, you're actually doing yourself more harm than good. So yeah. you've got to be willing to. Well, to Old take Spice a shot is at. a really good example of that. Here's a product that was essentially circling the drain. Nobody was buying it anymore, and what they decided to do was go funny with their product. Mm -hmm. And boom, it took off. Not because it was any better. It's pretty much the same product. It's been around for 40 years or 50 years or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now they're selling it like crazy. And they got the, the TV commercials that they have are actually tested on YouTube first before they actually launch them on TV right. now. Yeah. And have you guys seen the most recent Old Spice ads? I saw recently the ones with, uh, with moms, like following around their son. A bunch of moms, right. right. Yeah, that their sons are now grown men. Have you seen it? No, I've seen that. Men. I got the one over here with uh, Terry Crews. They got the, the mom, it's like she's snaking across the floor onto the car, onto the bed, and they're coming out of the ground at the beach. It's yeah. pretty bizarre. Good Morning America did a piece about that where they were saying, is this ad funny or is it creepy? Like, does it matter? It just got on Good Morning America. I mean, ah, got your attention, yeah, didn't it? Exposure yeah. by being different. Right, being right, funny. right. Well, that's what I was getting to my point earlier, that, again, it could be a distraction or an attraction. That, that, and the, the, the problem you have to worry about is, are you, are you, is your message being lost? Because it's too funny or too creepy or too off the wall, you know? Or do you bend somebody a shape because you offended them? Like, I, I think about the Cheerios commercial that came out not very long ago, and it was, it was a mixed racial couple. I thought it was really funny as heck when the little girl pours the Cheerios all over her dad because she's trying to lower his cholesterol. But some people get really bent out of shape because it was a multiracial couple, that kind of stuff. So, you know. Which shows you that not everybody has a sense of humor. That's, right. <laughs> That's the first problem you've got. you got to find people that have a sense of humor. But, but again, you, what's great about working right. on... on you know, YouTube as opposed to working on the major networks is right. what does it really cost you to take a shot? Right, doesn't cost. And again, A/B testing can essentially be free, or yeah. next to free. <laughs> and, yeah. and video production doesn't even have to cost very much. You right. know, creativity is not something that costs money. Creativity is what's lacking in a lot of ads. It doesn't need a ton of money. You don't need a Michael Bay car cases and explosions production. You just need something clever. You need something fun. You need something different. None of that costs money. Right. As a matter of fact, I made a short list of items that I always see in the best commercials. They're usually, they can engage people quickly, but a lot of this because they have quirky twists and turns, things that you don't expect. It's the unexpected that often produces the funny piece. That's right. They almost always have a good punchline of some kind, you know, and, and it comes with the right timing. Mm -hmm. um, and if you leave those pieces out, that's what doesn't make them memorable. I mean, if they're right. dry, that's what makes them dry and stale. I know we've produced several here where we did the... Well, the, we're going to queue one up right now because uh, Hector, since he's talking, I'm going to queue up one we did with Hector recently where we put Hector inside of a snow globe. Yeah. Hi, this is Hector Cisneros with W Square Media Group. I've agreed to climb into this snow globe to introduce you to an amazing offer that will shake up your holiday. 2014. Find out more, give me a call at the number below. <laughs> hey, the commercial's over, so knock it off. Sorry. For those who are out there in Radio Land, when I do that, I'm actually looking up through the snow globe at Carl, who's a giant. Okay, and again, all this is done with green screen and stuff like that. So the average person probably couldn't do something like that. But you could do things with, with cameras with not too much trouble. I mean, I really, I've seen some really cool stuff where you're not doing special effects. You're just inserting a lot of things. That's right. And that's what makes it fun. Well, and there are even several sites online where if you don't have the capability of doing them yourself, you can actually get some help. Right. Because what's the one that you were using with the little animations? Right. Powtoons, right? Yeah, Powtoons. You can do all kinds of really cool animation things for next to nothing. Jib Jab. We, we sent out Jib Jabs. Are you familiar with Jib Jab, Austin? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we use jib jabs a lot. In fact, at Christmas, we commissioned a whole series of jib jabs where we, you know, put our faces in of all the people at the office. And people were just, they really liked that because they, they got a laugh out of it, but they get to see us. So that's a, a you know, a really cheap version and of And actually, we did a show on Fiverr not very long ago. You can actually get special effects stuff done for Fivers. You give them a $5, yeah. <laughs> and people will do stuff for you. So, again, if you're on low budget, you can still do this kind of stuff without that, spending a lot of money. That Dollar Shave Club ad, I would be more than willing to bet the Dollar Shave Club ad that went so big, they got millions of views on its own. I'll bet they were mostly just using stuff they had lying around. A lot of props in there, but they're just props that they had. And we at Orbrush, we used just 
We just use like silly slapstick gags. It's not high end special effects or anything. Yeah, I put on here that, you know, when you're doing the things, if you have cookie props, there's, there's one uh, girl that we've seen on, on video that the only thing she really does is she wears different hats a lot. Yeah. Lots of crazy hats. Okay. That's her stick. And, and she's generating hundreds of thousands yeah, of views. Yeah, hundreds of thousands of views. And just blathering and, for like 10 minutes. I mean, the message is completely off the wall. There's no message. Right. She talks for like 20 minutes, but she's got 100,000 views. Because of the hats. <laughs> so <laughs> you'd be surprised what, what really can make a difference. I, one of the things I don't see too many people do is interject testimonials into their um, funny, you know, doing funny testimonies. Where you, There's one that I saw was for an insurance guy. I'm sure they're doing it on green screen, but he looks like he jumped out of a plane and he's given a testimonial, and he says, oh, I think I just wet my pants. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, he's, again, he's got the, the quirky turn that you don't like, yeah. expect to see that's the punchline that makes the big difference. With our products, we've done um, these three videos that are kind of a wide net cast to draw people in, and then when you get to our landing page or our website, kinds of testimonials. So we're kind of... Uh, entertaining and then educate right afterward. Right. Right. And again, both of those technologies are very cheap. I mean, doing testimonials cost you practically nothing. Right. A lot of the testimonials that we have literally cost us nothing because they were just testimonials that he posted on Facebook, unprompted from us. Absolutely. And again, I would tell our listeners out there that if, if you want those testimonials, ask for them <laughs> and you will get them. <laughs> And that's why the people say, gee, how do I get testimonials? You ask for them. The other thing is you do is you just be nice to people right. and they will give you testimonials. I mean, on LinkedIn, for example, if you want people to give you testimonials, give them testimonials. I guarantee you, you'll get them back. Right. And LinkedIn's mechanism automatically produces those for you. Again, the problem is you, you, a lot of people are afraid of asking for testimonials. Right. Uh, we, for one of the, a couple of the clients we work with are actually chiropractors. I mean, that's a very intimate relationship. And we first told them they really need to get some testimonial videos. They're like, well, our patients aren't going to want to get online. How many videos have we done for them? Maybe uh, about, 40? Yeah, about 40 testimonial videos now. All their yeah. patients want to get on this thing. You know, all the hippo laws and yeah. all that stuff. Eh, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> and it works. Yeah, because, because people know that when they see somebody that's a real person on right. the screen, that's absolutely believable. Right. There's nothing like real video testimonials because it's it's hard to lie when you're doing that video testimonial. Right. I mean, co hmm? actors actors give themselves away, but the average person who's doing that testimonial, right. I mean, you can't buy that kind of uh, advertising. Right. Now, now speaking of advertising, Austin, I mean, you've done the the tongue brush, you've done the dog tongue brush. What's next? <laughs> Where can you go from here? <laughs> uh, the most recent thing I've been working on is uh, I got married last summer, and me and my wife, for the first 101 days of our post-honeymoon married life, lived on the new online currency, Bitcoin. I've been working on this documentary film about living on Bitcoin for the past little bit. That was a pretty crazy adventure as well. I mean, the, the online marketing, video marketing world has been kind of wild, but now I'm taking a lot of those skills and applying them to uh, making a film, being an actual like feature-length film. Cool. Do you know that last year, one of the big, um, they're, they're not called banks, they're called, uh, they're called something else, but one of, one of the big ones got hit for $3.4 million in Bitcoin. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. yeah. It's kind of a wild, wild west right now, and I, and I figured... You know, this is an interesting space where a lot's going on, and it doesn't seem to be going away, so I want to get involved in that some way. And I'm not a programmer, I'm not a cryptographer or a security expert, but video, video I can do, video I understand. And so that was a way that we could get involved in that growing space, that new platform. Experience new platforms present all kinds of opportunities. And uh, so we just kind of went out of it, blind, but it seems to be working. Uh, and, that was... Uh, that The Bitcoin subject, which was something that we've... I guess we've written about it twice. Mm -hmm. And we've done two shows on it. It was one of the first breakthrough big shows where we had most of the shows would have 1,000, 2,000 downloads. That was one of the first ones that I think broke 10,000 10, downloads, one show by itself. Yeah, and spe speaking yeah. of, of our show, uh, one of the things we've also done recently is we've gotten a couple of sponsors. And one of the sponsors we actually did a little funny ad for, so I'm going to play that for the yeah. guests. And you'll get a chance to see it when you see the uh, TV show version of it. <laughs> You may not know it yet, but if you smoke, there's a game being played right now for your right to choose where, when, and if you can use e-cigarettes in public places. 
Unlike most games, this one has seen so many rule changes that it's hard to keep up. Let's take a look at the current lineup. Get into the game before the clock runs down and the game is over before you even knew it has begun. Fifteen yards for roughing the spokesperson. So that goes on a little more, and at the end she gets, you know, creamed by a couple of big bruisers. Yeah, and she goes flying off the screen. There's another one that we did, it's called the Vapomatic. So we, we came up with this idea at, uh, while we were watching football, that we take a laser pen that I had, and instead of, you see all these really weird vaping sticks now. They're people, they look like Star Trek, you know, like lasers, swords and stuff like that. We said, why don't we make one that's called the Vapomatic, and it's a spoof on it, It's a spoof, you know, so it, it lights things, it, it has a laser, it does all this stuff. And at the end, the, the spokesperson comes in and pushes them off the screen and then gives them the straight pitch. So, and nothing, nothing fancy, but it's really funny. And we actually filmed it in a 60s, 8 millimeter film type format. And then it, switch, and then it switches into modern day. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool the way we did it. So that'll probably be on the show there too. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have that on when we do so the final cut. we've got about two minutes left. We want to make sure we mention our sponsors uh, today. So, of course, we have Tub King and Senior uh, Bath, where they have a bunch of specials going on on their, on their bathtubs. So mm -hmm. if you're really into a really cool-looking claw foot tub or you want a, some kind of safety bathtub, they have the premier tubs that you can get. As a matter of fact, several movie, movie studios buy their tubs to put them in the movies. From Tub King. Yeah, yeah. from Tub King here in Jacksonville. So... That's one of them, and of course, Buy E, which is the, the e-cigarette company. So if you're trying to quit smoking, this is the really cool product to get. Um, we got about 60 seconds. We want to remind people that if you go to the blog also, uh, all the notes for the radio show today and the TV show are there. We have links to dozens and dozens of articles and videos and podcasts and so on. So, um, and we also want to, of course, thank Austin for spending yeah. some time with us. Thanks, guys. So having said that, we got about, I don't know, 50, 60 seconds left. 60 seconds. There you go. <laughs> 60 seconds. Uh, our uh, own Nagamatic yeah. <laughs> tells us what we have left on the, on the and show. I, I just wanted to thank our <laughs> listeners because, again, we've broken month after month, record after record. I mean, our, our show is just snowballing. Uh, last month we did, last week we did 30,000 downloads. downloads right. And that exceeded the prior month, actually. So one show exceeded the entire month. Um, so, again, a big snowball going on here, and we expect that to continue. Our, the blog is getting in 5,000 views a month now. So and next week is we're going to have Next Tech. Yep, Next Tech. We're going to talk about a lot of the things that just came up at the Consumer Electronics Show in uh, Las Vegas. A lot of really interesting wearable uh, computers are, are popping up. Robotics is huge now. Right. So we're going to talk about it. If you think it's confusing now, you ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah. <laughs> so having said that, Working the web to win. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f great. <laughs>